I've got a full day of plant maintenance ahead of myself, cleaning, watering, repotting, chopping, extending and so on. So I thought I'd take you along. Good morning and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are doing a full day of plant care, specifically indoor plant care. I've already set up my greenhouse with its spring setup. I've already done a whole lot of gardening um, over the last couple of weeks. So today it's time to focus on what I do best, indoor plants. I kind of, I wouldn't say neglected, I kept on top of maintenance, so I kept on top of watering and because we just came out of the colder season, I haven't had all too many pest issues anyway, but I've kind of stopped doing chopping. Hello, my baby. Okay, so you're gonna help us today? Hmm? But yeah, over the last, I'd say, two to three months, I kind of didn't do any repotting because I figured, well, let's just wait for spring so the plant has a better chance of um, recovering from the repot without any shock. I, I kind of stopped doing any propagations or, baby, I stopped doing propagations or chopping extents and so on. So now that spring is here and the temperatures outside are consistently nice and warm, I think it is time to get on top of all of my indoor plant maintenance um, and then as a result of that and I suppose as a result of potting up a few plants into slightly larger pots I will probably have also have to rearrange and then as part of the rearranging I'll see if maybe I'll take some of these plants and put them in the greenhouse forever. See how we go. I don't really have like a super organized plan for today. Um, because I feel like everything needs to be done. So I just want to get as much stuff done as possible today. We've had daylight savings yesterday, which means we have one extra hour tonight before it gets dark. So I think I've got till, till about six o'clock until it gets dark. It is now nine o'clock. Actually, pretty much exactly nine o'clock. Beautiful. That means that I have nine hours of daylight left in the day to get as much plant maintenance done as possible. I'm gonna try and take you along and as much as I can and film it, but I obviously just need to also really focus on getting the work done. So um, it's gonna be a lengthy video, but it's obviously not gonna be nine hours long. Now today is nice because it's only about 20-ish degrees outside at the moment. Yesterday it was, oh, that light is, you know what, just maybe for the sake of today, I'm just gonna get rid of the grow light because it's kind of in the middle of the way. And it makes it really hard to film. I think that's a bit better, right? So, today is a good day to do it. Yesterday was 35. I actually wanted to do this over a couple of days. And, and this is the last few days of my little holiday before I need to go back to work. Now, yesterday was 35 and tomorrow is going to be 35 and at the moment the 35 degrees are really, really dry and we have really dry winds. Now, wind is not good uh, for these things to happen because we don't want plants to be blown over and uh, 35 degrees is also not a good time to do this, uh, for neither for the plants nor myself. So today is only about 25, which makes this a whole lot more comfortable for all of us. Alrighty, so where do we start? Let me take you outside. Alrighty, good thing is these days I have courtyards to do these things in. So I'm um, thinking I'll get rid of these chairs so I've got a little bit of extra room. <sighs> Greenhouse is looking good, huh? Over here I've got a fully stocked air road bar, happy days. I've got a whole lot of pots and I've got a little baby in here. I'm gonna let him out in a second, but for now I'd rather have him stay inside because he has been jumping the fence a couple of times. Which is okay while I'm supervising him, right? I'll just politely ask him to come back down. But if I'm busy reporting and talking to you, I don't also wanna to have to look at bread. And you guys are so crooked again. Anyway, so I've got everything that I need, I think, for the report today. Yes. Yes, you're gonna help supervising later, okay? Let's get it get on top of the, the bulk first, yeah? 
Yeah? Okay. Wait, one moment, please. Alrighty, so I thought I'd put a head on. It's pretty glary out here. I'm still a bit tired, so I'm having troubles keeping my eyes open. But I've been so excited for this day. I really wanted to get it done. And yeah, as I said, today, yesterday and tomorrow it wasn't really a good day. So I got to get all of my work done today. So let's make an aeroid mix first because we're going to need it. Now, I couldn't find... I couldn't find a really large box, so I'm just gonna do it in three smaller ones. So well, that's what it is. Started off strong, already not on top of the framing. So I'm just doing three buckets of air white mix. Now, I need a lot of this today. So I'm doing, I'm gonna use cocoa peat instead of tree fern fiber, because tree fern fiber is just a little too expensive and I don't have enough of it. So I'd rather just use it for a small, few smaller plants rather than using it for the bark of my plants. I used made one mix with cocoa, uh, with tree fern fiber. The other two, I'm just gonna put cocoa peat. I'm also gonna make this slightly more water retentive than I would normally do because we're going into summer and this year summer is supposed to be really dry and hot. Alrighty, so I've got a little repotting station over there. Very improvised. Maybe I'll be better off having that in the corner, huh? I can just sit here. There you go. I mean, that corner doesn't look the greatest, but it will work. Ooh, this. So now I'm just thinking I'll go room by room. So I want to start off with the room that's obvious. Take them out, see if the plant needs repotting uh, or not. If it just needs watering, it just goes into this holding area over here where they all get watered, all sprayed, I let it dry, put them back in next room. Sounds like a plan, no? All right, let's have a look. And ideally, I try and just move the nursery pots, not the actual. Um, all right, so have a look at this. This looks fairly root bound. But I don't want to repot this. This has potential for more, I reckon. What I might do though, is I might just give it a little top up. It looks a little empty at the top. Does that make sense? Blood banana looks okay. Some chunky roots, but overall plenty of room left. So I'll just water and wash her. Skindapsis silver lady. And so I can't really see any roots pushing out the side, so yeah. Actually judging by the pot, this should be pretty unhappy, but looks happy. Right, this is the other scandapsis. It's quite happy. Might consider taking some propagations of this soon. Uh, some roots pushing towards the side of the pot, but no need to repot. Now, what I like to do with these sometimes, I like to just take some of these unruly ones and just twist them around in the pot instead of having them trail around like crazy. Uh, I just rather have it lush at the top than super le leggy at the top and then these super leggy little cuttings. But some are fine. There you go. That's how I ended up so messy at the top. But I kind of like that look better than having it trail down. Cute little pole of Majestic. Has some good roots, some good healthy roots. I only potted this up during winter, so no need to do anything here. Just give this a good spray. I'm worried about this cactus, huh? It's gonna, let me get rid of this cactus. Maybe a little begonia. It has been eaten by a caterpillar, but I since found the caterpillar 
and the new leaves coming through look healthy. Um, this is still in its original mix, but it looks fine. So, given I have never repotted a begonia, I'd rather not. I've got my rugosum on the pole. I only potted this up maybe two weeks ago. So nothing to do over here. I will give it a spray though because there's a bit of tree fern fiber all over the plant. Okay, my tenue had spider mites by the way. I think I got on top of that. The mix looks kind of... I know that this has like the most disappointing root system but I feel like I want to get rid of that mix. I don't like it. And my shazza also has some okay roots but also doesn't look super happy. It's fine. I'll leave it as it is. I'll just wash this one. Actually, I won't repot this either. Maybe next week. We'll see. Okay, this is my Picton tricolor. It's much happier since I put it in a, a more shaded spot. It has okay roots as well. The potting mix looks a bit dirty, but I think actually it's the pot that I put it in. Because I'm reusing my pots, so the pots kind of were a little bit tinted already by the time I potted something in here. But it looks happy. I can see new root growth, so let's not fix what's not broken. And I've got an orchid, it's a present for my birthday, here we go. I have no idea about orchids, so I'm not going to pot this up, but it needs water. So I will water it. Jose Bono, this one, uh, it fell the other day and the midrib snapped, it's a bit sad. This leaf would have been really pretty. But this one uh, desperately needs a clean and I do want to repot this as well. My El Choco, so beautiful, look at this new leaf. I just potted this up about, you can see these, this one was a new pot, so much nicer and clearer anyway. Um, this one was only repotted a couple of weeks ago, so nothing to do for us now, just cleaning. Esmeraldins, new leaf, happy days. Pot is looking happy and healthy. Now, let me show you something. Over winter, I sometimes get a bit of mineral buildup on my moss poles. This white thing, it's not mold, it's just mineral buildup because probably fertilized a little too heavy. So when I spray the plant today, I really want to spray it with just water and flush it all out. All right, my soddy Roy. This plant has been on this moss pole for a long time, so a lot of mineral buildup over here. I definitely tend to over fertilize. These leaves are a little damaged and dirty as well. So I've got to clean these up. I think, just a, I think I just need to flush this out. Actually, I might repot this. Let's get started. I'll start with the Jose Bono. And I'm collecting all of the existing aeroid mix in this box and I can use this when I pot up like a palm or something like that outside. Okay, these roots don't look healthy. That all comes off. But I can see some new healthy roots. Okay, so this plant definitely, it feels dry. I actually have the problem of underwatering my pots because it's so focused on keeping the moss pots moist I sometimes forget the pots. Uh, this seems to be the opposite problem of most people have online. Hey, anyway, that was a good decision to repot it. So this is currently surviving purely based on the root system within the moss pile, I suppose. And this little bit down here. So yeah, I feel like since I moved into this new apartment over here, I don't have like a proper routine anymore. Like, I used to have a really, really strong, clear uh, routine around my indoor plants. Of course, I mean, you've got to make it subject to the plants and the routine changes throughout the seasons and so on. But I still feel like I had a fairly clear routine. Like every Saturday in the morning, I have like a few hours of just doing all of my plant watering. And I used to be really good. I took all of my plants into my bathtub every week. I watered it thoroughly in the bathtub, letting all the excess drain out. I cleaned all of the leaves, spread them just with water, just to have clean, fresh leaves at all times. And I do think my plants were thriving the most when I did all of that, when I, had, when I put that much effort in it. I do think that your plant's health 
um, and the way that they cover and the way that they look is usually a direct um, reflection of how much effort uh, you're willing to put into it, right? It doesn't mean that you always need to work super hard. Sometimes you just need to work smart, right? Sometimes the more you do, hang on. More is not always more when it comes to plant care, but I suppose being consistent about it. And definitely when it comes to cleaning your plants, you can't clean them too often. Like clean, happy plants will be happy, as I've said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just honestly have too many plants and quite frankly, the plant maintenance part of my hobby is just one part of it. I spend a lot more time on content now and video editing that the plant maintenance in itself sometimes uh, is like a second priority, um, which is okay though, because it gets very repetitive, right? I mean, doing that every week, day in, day out, like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy it and I will always look forward to it, but at some stage, you also want to break the routine a little bit and do something new, do something different. This is, it used to be Calithia Mosaica, they keep renaming it. Uh, I just bought this at Dunnings a couple of uh, weeks or months ago. I'll give it a bigger pot, uh, probably a couple of months ago maybe, because I put my existing one into the ground outside. She's alive, but I wanted one inside as well. I don't know. It was one of my first plants that really sparked my plant hobby. Now for this one, I use my aeroid mix, but I use all of the really fine parts of my aeroid mix. So I go to the bottom of the bin. Whereas for the moss pow, I went to the top of the bin and just took all the chunky parts of my airwork mix. So yeah, I feel like my plants aren't thriving to their full potential. I've definitely gotten a little more slack with my plant maintenance at times in favor of creating some content. I used to be like so on top of things, like crazy. I would know every single plant when it pushes out a new leaf, when that leaf needs to be like directed in its right direction to make sure I create nice display sites. I would be obsessed with creating like the perfect display for my plants and making it look pretty and all. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm still obsessed with that, but I think to a lesser extent. I think I see more beauty in, in, per, in imperfection now as well. My plant doesn't need to look perfect. You know what I mean? Okay, this one is a mess, so let's repot it first because it's a bit unstable. And then we gotta look at the leaf situation. So this would have been in here for a long time because it is such a slow climber it doesn't really reach the top of its moss pot. It's been on this moss pot for are we reaching three years soon? Two and a half maybe? Um, or two? I don't know. But it's been on this moss pot for a long time. Longer than any of my other plants. And that just means that I didn't have to do any chop and extends, any repots, because it's just doing its own thing on that moss pot. So it didn't, like, be, I don't really worry about the moss pot in itself kind of going old. Yes, technically the moss should have a limited lifespan. But given that this plant has been on it for a long time and it's by far my slowest climber, I'm not so worried. Let's have a look at this little bit of root rot. Doesn't look the healthiest. I mean, the plant is thriving, it's pushing out a new leaf, so clearly it's not a concern for the plant. Okay, so because this plant is kind of a bit top heavy, it's having a hard time standing up there. So I'm giving it a garden stake at the back as well. 
And if that doesn't help, I've got another trick up my sleeve. Yeah, this is not gonna work by itself. Oh my god, this is so annoying already. The thing is, even like a bigger, a bigger pot would even solve this problem. It just needs to be heavier, not bigger. So, what I do sometimes, I have like this big rock. And I put the rock like here to stop the pole from wanting to fall over. There you go, that helped, that worked. All right, and it has a yellow leaf as well. Let's cut that beach. All right. Oh, we're already done with repotting oh, number one. So let's get rid of this because it's gonna get wet. I don't trust this one though. So I do put, I'll put it in a, I'll put it in this heavy decorative planter. Just to be safe. Okay. Close the door so it doesn't get filthy inside. Alrighty, this is my trusted GT foliage focus and GT root zone. Um, just the ones that I freshly potted up, I'll use the fertilizer with it. The other ones I'll just do water. I should actually uh, catch the excess. And then I just got water in my pressure sprayer over here. I could use a hose, but I like to use the pressure sprayer because I can be more targeted. So I'm really just spraying every single leaf, front and back, as well as the moss pole, get rid of any mineral buildup potentially. Just really flush it all out. I might actually take a hose and just hose everything down afterwards as well. I just wanted to be more targeted with this one. Okay, if it has a thousand leaves like this one, obviously I can't spray all of them. That will be done by the hose later. Here, get some mineral buildup. I want to just spray that off. Okay, so the next part is gonna be a little more challenging because it's time to focus on my big plants on moss piles. So you're inside now, and I made a little bit of room here. What I was thinking, maybe I can use this part of my greenhouse to kind of hook these into. I should probably get rid of this cactus too. Oh my God, it's heavy. This is my philodendron splendid. It came crashing down on me twice recently. It is just way too top heavy. And um, the only other plant I have this problem with is my philodendron glorious, but the glorious actually is where there's like a little hook in the wall. So I kind of hook the glorious into the wall. This one doesn't have a hook, so it came crashing down on me twice. So you can see a little bit of damage here. It is also pushing out this brand new leaf over here. But I'm just so worried that it's going to fall. I can hardly water it at the moment, like, without kind of having to hold on to it. So, time for a chop and extend, because I don't enjoy having plants that are really hard to manage. So, yesterday, I chopped in between the stem already. I'll put in a little close-up. Uh, so, today, I can really chop it. And this lighting is terrible. Okay, it is what it is. This is as good as it gets today. So... Let's do the chop and extend. I have multiple tutorials on how to do the chop and extend on my YouTube channel. So I'm not going to explain this whole process today again. I'm just going to do it. And I often get asked what I do with the bottom part of my pole. Actually, all my bottom poles will end up being donated to Tim. Because Tim is moving house and he's got a lot of room for plants in his new place. So he's going to get all the bottom parts of the poles 
as a little thank you for always helping me out with the content. All right, I've got the top half separated. Alrighty, this is the bottom half. I will do nothing with this. Oh, I might see if it needs a repot, given that I am passing it on to somebody else. I can also re-extend that, but not yet. I'm waiting for this to reshoot first. But happy days. I will, you know what, I'll park this inside the greenhouse. Oh, that was dumb. Alrighty, so now I've got this and because I already cut the stem last night, it already had enough time to dry out so I can just work on potting it up straight away. But given how big this plant is and I know it will continue growing, I will give this plant a 25 centimeter pot instead of my normal 20. But the trick of hooking this into the greenhouse worked really well. That's a good trick for future chop and extends. Beautiful. Damn, that took so much air it makes. Take the garden stake, I add it back in the back. Okay, so as the camera died as well, but I also decided that that previous framing was just not it. So here we are. So I'm just connecting the garden stake to the out pole. And then leading up to spring, I made a whole lot of moss poles. Could chop the pot that on here now. And then lastly, connect the actual moss poles to each other. So yeah, anyway, I, was, I kind of didn't finish that conversation from earlier. All I was saying earlier was kind of like, yeah, definitely. The more effort you put into maintaining your plants, the better they usually look, right? Yeah, people say like, oh, plants thrive on neglect. It depends on what your definition of thriving is, though. I'm a very neat person. I like my plants fairly neat. I don't necessarily appreciate the wild I mean, I appreciate wild plants, but not in my apartment. Huh? I do have like a certain vision in mind, and usually that vision is realized when I stay on top of my plant maintenance. I clean the leaves and so on, right? Um, whereas if you just set and forget, your plant's gonna get dusty. Dusty leaves can't photosynthesize. Dusty leaves are more, let's have a look at this. You see these juicy roots over here? Well, these roots want to attach to something. If I would now wait longer to do the extension, the next node and so on has nothing to attach to. Is this even straight? No. If you don't give your plant something to attach to, then it's not going to thrive to its full potential. So I used to be really, really good with that and be, always be on top of all of my chop and extends, all of my repottings, all of that. And I think it definitely showed. By no means am I saying my plants aren't looking beautiful, but I think I'm still benefiting from past Jan having been so on top of everything and the plants really started thriving. And now that they're thriving, it's kind of hard for them to no longer thrive, if that makes sense. But I think it's just like with pretty much any other hobby, the more effort you put into something, the more likely you're gonna get a reward out of it. And again, effort doesn't necessarily mean you just need to water every day, that could be the wrong thing. Effort also, incorpor in effort, effort also implies 
making an effort in understanding what you can do to make your plants thrive in the best way. And as part of the journey, you'll find out that watering them every day is not the right thing to do. But you know what I mean, like this whole like set and forget, uh, thrive on neglect attitude that I see a lot online, but then expecting like amazing results. To me, that doesn't make sense, right? If you want to experience amazing results, you most likely have to put a little bit of effort into it. Um, if it was so easy and everything would just be thriving without the need for anybody to put any effort into it, you would see these things on the side of the road everywhere, right? Um, you wouldn't, you would go to a nursery and you would never see any stock that dies, right? Like there's people making a living out of selling plants and even their stock dies. So if it was so easy, then everybody would just be neglecting their stuff and everything would be thriving, right? Anyway, let's bring out some more plants. Right, my Milano has also reached the top of its moss pole end. And you can see the newest node over here has nothing to attach to. But the second shoot is only up to here. So I'm gonna buy the second shoot a little bit more time. Um, yeah, because I don't, I, do I? A little bit more time. Maybe next, next week or next month, next month. Let's say next month. Glorious is doing well. This one I'm not worried about falling over, to be honest. Yeah, I'll put this here. Okay, I can put this here if it's not falling over, right? Just here. Alrighty, so I just rearranged a little bit. This plant, it's a mess. I think I need to repot. Can you see the roots up here? So it's too big, I can't, no, okay. I hope you can see everything in frame, but I can no longer move. I was not planning on repotting this, but it's happening. Now this plant also, and I know I'm not the only one because I've spoken to people on Instagram about it. This plant has super crazy extra floral nectaries. They make it really, really sticky and eventually damage the leaves. So I need to clean those as well. Man. Oh shit. Oh. that the greenhouse is gonna break. One moment. Alrighty guys, this thing is so heavy, I have decided to, decided to make an arrow mix that's a little more pumice heavy because pumice is the heaviest of the ingredients that I'm using. I just need to do everything one-handed. And I'm putting it up almost like leaning the pole backwards a little bit, because we know it's gonna be top heavy, right? mix stuff again because it's gonna get wet. Okay, I wanna spray these kind of thoroughly first.
can you see all of these little, it's like moldy patches. That's where they have these extra floral nectaries. They're basically like sugars and then the mold gets kind of attracted to them. Not good. So what I do is I spray this first and then I give it a wipe. But, oh, new leaf. Guys, you need to move away because you're gonna get wet. It's crazy, when you chop these plants and then you put up the top again, and now the top is kind of on my eye height, it's the first time I noticed how big these leaves are. When they were all the way up there where I can't see them as well, they looked smaller. I should probably do this like once every couple of months. Realistically, I'll probably do it once every five to six months, but you see a little bit of yellow discoloration on these leaves. I believe the extra floral nectaries are the reason why. And I could prevent some of this damage by being more diligent and frequent in the cleaning. This is by far the plant that does this the most. You see these extra floral nectaries often, and I believe they're either to attract beneficial insects or deter Bad insects, not sure which one, uh, but no plant does it like this one. And like, yeah. The problem with this plant is just that it's become so big, it's hard to maneuver it around. So I try to not touch it as much, like, because I feel like every time I touch it, the risk of it just falling is pretty high. But I had this idea about hooking it into the greenhouse yesterday. And I'm really glad that works because now I might do this more frequently. By the way, the newer leaves don't have it as much. It's really the older leaves that mainly have it. So these new ones, I just really gently swipe. It's the perfect day to do all of this. It's not windy, but a little bit of airflow and it is overcast, so the sun is not gonna us up. All right, I think that's good enough. While I'm here, I do have a leaf shine. I might just quickly shine my soddy roll. Okay. All right, as a last thing, I just wanna drench everything. And I'm gonna use the hose, that way it's really gonna flush out. It's not as targeted with the leaves as I was before with the little spray gun, where I really got into every little crevice. But this should just help flush out any mineral buildup and so on. Now obviously this is making it thoroughly wet, which means all I need to do is I just need to give it enough time to dry out here later. Alrighty. Guys, that doesn't mean that I have nothing to do. I'm going to use that time while everything is outside to clean up in here. Uh, 
Alrighty, I'm back. I rearranged all of the plants to go onto this wall instead so that I can continue doing some repotting over here because I also want to get on top of the second room which is the anthurium room slash my bedroom. So I want to bring all of those plants out as well. I think majority of those need repotting and um, yeah, that gives these plants behind me a little bit more time to dry. Now the sun is approaching but it is kind of overcast a little bit so I'm hoping that the sun isn't going to be too damaging. Let me get down three rooms. So I'm just going to go through the window over here. Uh, big one. I just kind of scatter them around me. Also, you guys know I have the forest over here. I'm going to see what needs to be done on here as well. There you go. Let me focus on those later. Let's focus on the anthuriums first. The tie has moved in with the anthuriums because it was taking up too much space. Mm, this one's my current favorite. I think you guys can't really see me. I'll just hurry up. Alrighty. We're back. I got a coffee and a juice. Oh, smoothie, it's a Fijoa smoothie. Have you ever had a Fijoa smoothie? If not, you're missing out. Okay, I'm gonna park this here, which is extremely risky. No risk, no fun, right? Um, so let me get most of the anthuriums. I'll park them all on the side and we can assess them a little bit. All right, let's focus on the ones first that don't need repotting because I just recently done this. This is a little hybrid I made with a friend, a queen and a magnificum hybrid and I just potted this up a couple of weeks ago because it used to live in the IKEA cabinet. So this is all good to go. I'll put it on the side because still everything is going to get a spray today. Then also have this. It's one of the little uh, anthurium crazy rubbish that I uh, isolated from the big pot and uh, grows a new plant, uh, grows a new leaf. You can see how the roots are kind of coming from the moss and then spreading into the pot. So it's happy. Same goes with this one. It's also uh, one of the crazy rubbish hybrids I made uh, that are isolated. And again here, a lot of healthy roots coming. Sorry, I never peel these off. AJ hates me for not doing that, but yeah. All right, so they're all good. Oh, and then we've got the Vitarifolium. Also, it does not require repotting. Has plenty of room left. Very nice chunky roots, but I do want to uh, thoroughly clean it. So, this is a Crystallinum hybrid. I can see a bit of root rot in there. So, let's have a look into it. I have to say, Anthuriums and I have had a love-hate relationship. They definitely did not Oopsie, snapped the root. They definitely did not appreciate the move. Uh, out of all my plants, they appreciated the move the least. I don't know if it's the actual move or if it's just uh, the room that they're in there in my bedroom, which is the coolest room. It's the one with the least light as well. I don't think the cool is necessarily what bothers them. I think it was honestly just the change. They just did not appreciate. Actually, the roots look really healthy. There was like one or two roots that looked a little dodgy. Um, but overall, this looks pretty good. Ah, perfect. Uh, all the way at the bottom. Check this in here. Yes, it is quite a small pot, but that'll do for now. Or will it? Yeah. 
Yeah. That will be fine. Uh, we're going into spring, summer. I have no issue repotting again soonish if uh, that is what is required as a result of giving it a smaller pot to start off with. I'll put a layer of moss on top as well in the sack. I'll just do that all of them at once. Uh, this one is cool. Look, it even has a little inflow. Sorry, I'm not gonna get up again. This radicans, honestly, it. I brought this back from nothing, nothing. Um, it's still nothing. It's still tiny, but um, I kind of it has sentiment, sentimental value to me because I literally bought this plant back from a piece of nothing and it took years for it to even grow its first leaf. Back in the days they were still quite expensive. So it's more of a sentimental thing that I'm really happy that it's alive to the extent that it's giving me a flower. And look at these chunky roots, that's pretty crazy. I reckon I can give this a slightly larger pot. No, I have an idea. I'll put it in this pot. All will come, it will make sense later. You guys know I love my see-through pots. Uh, I always get my see-through pots from Bunnings, by the way. AJ stocks them as well. Um, but I don't know where they're available overseas. Sorry. Alrighty. Kind of happy with that. Next one, a little clonervium. Let's check this. Roots look um, okay. Not super stoked about the roots. Yep. I honestly, okay, so we found thuriums, I think, I think I caused the root rot in a lot of them, to be really honest. So let me explain kind of what happened. I've been a bit lazy recently. I, as I said before, same that I said with my moss pots, I used to take them into the bathroom every weekend and I uh, thoroughly spray them and so on. I used to also take all of my anthuriums uh, out there, or at least I would take a bucket into the anthurium room, take them all out of their pot, water them thoroughly, let it drain through. Since I moved in here, I've gotten a bit lazy and I honestly just go around with a spray gun and I just spray the top and let the water sip through. So I haven't really thoroughly um, flushed out any of these mediums in a long time. So I know that it's my fault uh, why these are not thriving or why there's root rot. Because, uh, you know, it's not necessarily the amount of watering that you do, that you water like a little bit or too much. It's more about flushing out the medium, getting oxygen through the substrate. And I just didn't do a good job at doing that over the last few weeks or months. So I'm not surprised that some of these plants had a bit of root rot. I'm actually surprised that none of them has fully died. So that's a positive. Um, but yeah, it comes back to the conversation that I started earlier. It's like, if you don't put wee, any effort into growing your plants and maintaining your plants, then you will have to expect suboptimal um, results. Or you can't necessarily grow plants that are high maintenance. So this substrate in itself, everything is actually quite fine. The plant has just grown way too many roots out of its pot instead of into its pot. So I just want to repot that plant. And that plant used to have the longest petioles and literally the last leaf is the first one that it gave me. That has a normal sized petiole. I don't know what went wrong with it before. Wow, this has a lot of juicy roots. Look at that. I might give it a bigger pot. It's funny to me, there's, I mean, I don't want to talk, I don't want to feed into gossip or I don't want to feed into the drama, but there is drama even in the plant community 
weirdly enough. You would think that this is a cute little innocent hobby, but no, there's drama. Some plants died, let's say. And this person was like, oh, it, they didn't die in my care. It was because my friend looked after them for me for a long time and it died in their care. So it's their fault. And uh, I'm a really good grower. I have a really good reputation for growing, blah, blah, blah. That's their words, right? And to me, that made no sense. If you have somebody else looking after your plants for half a year, five, six, seven months, how can then you, your ability as a grower is at zero? I don't care what you've done in the past. If you don't water your plants for six to seven months, then you're not the person growing them anymore. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. And that's the thing with plants, right? It's like, it doesn't matter how good of a grower you are. People are like, oh my God, you've got such a green thumb. You're such a good grower, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, I'm just really consistent. Yes, I have acquired some skills and some knowledge over the last few years. But most importantly, my ability as a grower is defined by my, my willingness to do the work. If I'm not willing or I don't have time because I'm overseas or whatever for six, seven months, then I can't say I'm a good grower. You haven't looked after your plants in six to seven months. That doesn't make you the grower, that makes you maybe the owner. Maybe you physically own the plants because you bought them. But to me, when it comes to plants, it's not about owning plants, it's about growing them. So my skill or my ability as a grower, to me, is directly correlated to my willingness to put in the effort and sometimes I'm more willing to put in the effort than others that's it if I'm not willing to put in the effort if I would not want to look after my plants anymore and if I'd stop doing all plant maintenance I'd give my plant collection maybe two to three weeks until it's dead like okay some plants like some monsteras will survive the three weeks and probably look still fine but they probably won't really ever recover from that much of a shock my anthuriums, my moss poles, most of them would just be dead. You can probably recover some of them by taking cuttings and starting from scratch. But the plants, as they look right now, as you are used to them, as I show them to you on my social media, they wouldn't exist if I stopped watering for two to three weeks. So my ability as a grower is not defined by how big I got some of my plants in the past. It's really defined by the effort I'm willing to put in now if you don't want your plants to die then you gotta look after them yourself what else can we talk about yeah so i've been by the time you by the time you see this video you would have seen the other one so by now you would have seen all the botanic gardens that we've got here in sydney so i went to the one in mount toma the cool climate one and i went to the one in mount ennen i had such a good time and i learned so much and it gave me such a new appreciation for plants and our native uh, environment over here in Australia um, so I'm really excited about that that is really the sort of thing I was thinking I think I needed to keep this hobby interesting to keep this channel interesting as well now I was actually a bit disappointed you guys didn't really enjoy these videos like uh, it had by far the least views ever these are videos I put days of effort in it like this takes forever to edit approval from the botanic gardens even just going there getting the dual camera angle the the random names you know like um it's a lot of effort to make these and then them not performing really well is definitely a bit disappointing makes me think that it's maybe not worth it going through all of this effort but then it's worth it from my perspective because I want to learn about these things. But then I'm thinking, should I maybe just go there and not bother taking you along because then I can actually enjoy the tour a little bit more rather than, you know, because if I'm... Yeah, I put this up quite small just because I'm sick of using so many big pots for everything. I'm going to run out of pots. Um, should I just go there and just enjoy the tour like a normal participant rather than being so focused on filming that like a lot of the things when I've watched the video of the tour it's like the first time I heard about it because at the time of taking the tour I was so focused on getting the getting the content getting the footage right? 
And I was like, mm, it is a bit disappointing if you put in so much effort. But I understand that it's very much not in line with what you're probably used to on my channel, right? You probably, you're used to house plans. That's what you came here for. That's what you subscribe for. You want house plans. You want moss piles. Um, so when I then give you flowers uh, in spring, uh, that might not be so in line with your, with your interests. But I'm hoping that maybe just some people find uh, inspiration by that and get into a new part of plants and uh, just broaden their interest in plants a little bit like, like it did for me. So even if just a handful of people really liked it, that would be good. Yeah, I suppose the Mount Enon one hasn't gone up yet, so I don't know if you're also gonna kind of show no interest in this one, but it was a little disappointing because I just really liked it. And it's weird when my interests don't align with your interests, it's gonna be a little challenging or more challenging to do good content that I enjoy making and you enjoy watching. And that's ultimately what it's all about, right? Wow, look at these roots. Oh, this is so healthy and happy. Should I just do nothing with it? Just give it a bigger pot? Not kind of tease it up a bit? Just get rid of some of this manky old moss at the top. But don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it and I want to keep doing these things as well. But I would just love for our interests to be a little more aligned. <laughs> so yeah, let's see how I go with this. Because I think ultimately if our interests are aligned, then it's going to be the best time for everybody. I'm going to have a good time making the content and you're going to have a good time watching the content. And also, don't get me wrong, I love indoor planting. I love it. And I want to keep doing it. And I'm really look, I look forward to this day today because this is like right up my comfort zone. It's the thing that I do the best. But I can't do that every day. I try and upload one to two videos a week. It's more often that I actually get to do two than just one. Uh, like how many things can I repot and how different is each repotting? I do want to add variety into this. At the same time working with things like the Botanic Gardens is a great collaboration opportunity for me. Network a little bit, right? With people that work in this sort of industry. Um, rather than just me sitting silent like, like a loiner on my computer editing all day. So it's nice to make this connection, get to know these people who have made plants their actual job outside of social media. Um, so yeah, I do enjoy this and I want to keep doing it, but I, it's going to be less frequent given that you guys don't enjoy it. So it got me contemplating what you guys would enjoy then instead. Okay, let me clean this up for a sec. I'm also just going to cut off anything, like look at this big fat inflow. I don't want inflows. So it got me thinking, if you don't enjoy my, if you don't enjoy these like tours or, I mean, I'm not saying you don't enjoy them because I do know some of you did enjoy the tours because you left a nice comment, but ultimately I can't do content that just really like 1% of my audience likes, kind of defeats the purpose, right? Um, ideally, I do content that the majority of my audience likes. So then more people are going to watch it, which means more success for me, I suppose. <laughs> like, I mean, don't blame me for wanting to be successful with this. I put a lot of effort into it. Uh, by the way, that video where I kind of talked about this a little bit more and everybody, I was overwhelmed by how nice everybody was and how understanding everybody was and how, you know, you're very much saying like, yes, you should be rewarded for your work and how much you appreciate my videos. That was really, really beautiful to read and gave me a lot of motivation to keep doing this. Um, that was really beautiful. So anyway, it definitely made me think about um, what sort of content I should be doing. And I do want to go back to the basics a little more. And I want to focus on these things that I sometimes maybe take for granted, just like how to 
repot a plant, how to, like even like the parts of the plant, what's a node, what's a petiole and so on. Kind of like when I first started this YouTube channel, I was kind of like, well, I'm not gonna go all the way down to basics. I feel like people know about this already or if they don't, like this probably already exists. But just based on the questions that I still get every day, maybe not everybody is aware of all of the basics. I have this issue where I'm worried that people take what I say out of context and then like it doesn't make sense anymore or like people listen to what I've got to say but they don't think like the step before, the step after. If so let's say for example, I talk about chop and extend. I do repeat the entire kind of purpose of the moss pole first and the moss pole, the plant having thoroughly rooted into the moss pole and so on. Because if I don't repeat that step that it is essential for the plant to have rooted into the moss pole, then the entire chop and extend doesn't make sense. Right? So every time I do a chop and extend, I kind of do a little recap on why I use moss poles in the first place and that and so on. Which means that I feel like my videos are very long, um, which is great. A lot of you love the long videos. You guys kind of said you love the long videos, you watch it at work or you watch it while you do your own plant chores and so on. It's like hanging out with a friend, which is exactly what I want this to be like. I don't want this to be like a lecture, you know. I want this to like hang out with a friend, but hopefully learn something and or be entertained. Um, but I was thinking maybe, 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 maybe I can do some videos that are just really short, like five minutes max, or like 10 minutes max, let's say, and just focus on one topic, like how to pot up something, or how to propagate something, or something like that. But obviously, in if I limit the time to like five to 10 minutes, there's gonna be a lot of things that are being left unsaid. So, you might have to watch like two or three videos to get all of the information. That, to me, kind of felt a bit stupid, so that's why I like to make these more comprehensive videos. But I know that a lot of people might be a little bit apprehensive to start watching a video that's like 25 minutes long or something like that, you know? They're like, I don't have time for this, I need to be told in 10. And I mean, the long videos are already up there for the people that enjoy the longer videos, but maybe, I'll just make some shorter videos um, as like a little back to basics quick guide or something like that. How do you feel about this? Leave a comment down below letting me know. Or, yeah. The thing is I feel like I've almost done every piece of content I can possibly do around indoor plants. Um, the pieces of content I haven't done are just the ones that I don't feel comfortable with. So for example, I haven't done a dedicated video on fertilizer and I haven't done a dedicated video on pest treatment. I am actually working on both. But when I say I'm working on both, I'm not working on filming this video myself because ultimately when it comes to fertilizers as well as pest treatments, my only experience is using products that others have recommended to me and I can pass on my recommendation. But that in itself, to me, is not really worth doing a whole YouTube video. If I would want, if I think about what I would want to, if I think about what I would want to hear about pest treatments or fertilizer myself, if I were the one looking for a video about this topic, I would love a subject matter expert to talk about not just what they use, but why they use it, and what are alternatives, and so on, and what not to use, and what to be careful with. All I can tell you is what I use, and how I use it, and I can just show you the proof, and hopefully that is okay for now, but I don't think there's a point in me doing a dedicated video on it, because I can't really go outside of just recommending something. Alrighty, let's clean up again a little bit. I'll close this window and I'll give these all a, oh. I'll give them more water and i give them a spray. I do water them, do want to water them thoroughly using the GT Foliage Focus and Root Zone. Talking about fertilizer or nutrients. And this time I remember the bucket to catch the excess. So that bucket catching the excess, I can then just take the excess and use it for like my potted plants in the other courtyard, for example, the palm trees. Or something like that. 
Nothing goes to waste. All right, first a targeted little spray. And this, and then I'll soak them thoroughly. Targeted spray I mainly do at the back so I can get in there. Next one is the thorough, uh, the, the, the rough one. Oops. Oh, that was a bit harsh. There you go, that's better. Oh, that's good. Alrighty, and then the big ones, what I'll do is I like to kind of tilt them on that side of the pavement a little bit um, for them to dry in a bit quicker. Oh, I was about to say time to clean up, but it's actually just time to flip around and look at the other plants. Oh, oh my god, I'm so exhausted already. Alright, this is my Monstera High Constellation. I had to move her into this bedroom over here because she was in the entrance and she just spread so far. I just brushed into her all the time, so I snapped leaves or leaves half snapped because of me like running into her. She's grown one new root since I repotted her but no new leaf. So nothing for me to do over here. She also seems fairly moist. No root rot smell though. I will just spray her leaves in a sec. So I'm gonna be park her on the side because it takes up a lot of space. Alrighty, got some cuttings here. Uh, looks happy and healthy, nothing to do over here. Just, this leaf is a little yellow, look at this. Beautiful. So these are all in my forest. I put a photo of what the forest means, what it means to have a forest. And they've been growing so nicely. It's beautiful. I'm really happy with that. Beautiful. Oh, really happy, healthy roots here too. Nice. This one grew one flower after the other, it's crazy. It has grown way more flowers than it has grown leaves. At least it's growing something. This one had thrips. Um, so yeah, I was talking about fertilizer and pest treatment and how I don't have any knowledge about this, so I don't want to do a video. But I'm, I started contacting some people whose opinions I really trust, who I know are experts in that sort of field, or at least you know, they, they, they have proper knowledge, a lot like me, just I just try things and some work, some don't. But there's people that actually know this stuff. So see when sometimes I have like long vines, I, try, I just take them and I just kind of trial them around the pot in here because I like trialing plants, but I want them to be bushy on the top still. I don't want like an empty pot and then like five leaves hanging down there. That way I also try and have more nodes, make contact with the substrate and grow a few more nodes rather than just that first node being rooted and everything else relying on that one root system. That way hopefully the plant will expand its root system a little bit. Again, healthy roots over here. Same goes for this, see how it's kind of just like hanging around here, getting a bit small and leggy. I'll just take it and I'll twist it around in the pot for a few more nodes to make contact with the substrate, maybe grow a root system, but also to just give it a more compact, lush look. Alrighty, now these, I have to do something with them. This is just getting a bit out of hand, I think, or maybe not. Look how lush, look how many new shoots they're coming. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Definitely 
in a smallish pod, but I can't see any roots growing out the bottom, so it can't be too bad. So let's just leave there. I have plenty of other things to do today. This plant, however, my carnivorous plant, Nepenthes rocker, I think it was. It is growing so many leaves. The old pictures have died and none of the leaves that is growing in my care has had a pitcher, which I think it's just not humid enough in my bedroom. So this one is gonna go into the greenhouse, but I wanna also give it a larger pot. And it's gonna hang in my greenhouse, so I've got one of these things. So, which means I have one of these pots spare, and remember how I planted the, what's it called again? Radicans, the Anthurium radicans, I've potted that in here. Okay. Wow. I don't know if that's a healthy root system or not. The roots are really dark and black. I suppose based on how much it has grown, the root system better be healthy. Now, for this mix, I wanna use water, a really water retentive mix. They really don't wanna dry out, uh, but still aeration, so I'll, Use a little bit of sphagnum moss that I put through this. There you go. Oh, it's gonna be so nice. I think now I'm truly done with all of the plants out of those two rooms. Clean up time. Alrighty, let's clean these. Alrighty guys, I'm almost done out here. Just wanna show you, I installed misting systems in the greenhouse as well. So this is just gonna live here now. And it's gonna be misted on. Beautiful! Oh, I like this. Oh, maybe it should live here instead. Okay, I like this better, maybe. Alrighty, haven't really optimized the schedule for the mister and so on, but it's like a proper greenhouse now. It's a hot day today, so I'll leave it slightly open. Hot air can escape through the top, and the misters just make sure that the temperature stays low and that the humidity stays okay. Now, whew. Alrighty, excuse the wet hair. I'm a bit sweaty. And look at this, how pretty is this? My friend made this rug for me. I'll link her in the description. You can send her some love if you want. Anyway, I just want to use the opportunity over here to clean everything over here as well. And uh, this is the forest, by the way, that we are talking about earlier. So this is where all of these little pots are gonna go. So I'll just use an opportunity to wipe this all down. Twelve thirty, so that took me three and a half hours and that's about half I need to move on to the living room but I'll have a little break first I'll I'll see you soon alrighty and we're back room number three the living area I have decided I'll opt for this beautiful Bunnings head yeah <laughs> I love this, but it's quite sunny out in the courtyard. I need a little more sun protection and something that offers a little more aeration than my normal. Hang on, I'll put the ears on the outside to make it look better. Like this. Hi everybody. Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, I look ridiculous, but honestly it's like the most Aussie thing I could possibly do is wear this hat. All right, living area. So slightly less plants to worry about in here. Most of them are on moss poles as well. Don't think there's gonna be all too much repotting to do. I recently already took care of the Ikea cabinet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I will position you outside. 
and I'll just bring out all of the plants that I need to tag out for repotting purposes. And then everything that doesn't need to be repot still needs to have a good spray. So everything will go outside for a spray eventually, but let's just focus on the ones with the repotting first. I think so. All right. <laughs> ah, look at my head. Bunnings, go sponsor me already. Okay, and I know this is going to be challenging with the light and the shade for you to see. I'm going to kind of try and stay in that shade that the tree behind me gives up. So in between, I done a fresh batch of aeroid mix. I cleaned up a little bit and so on. So I don't deal, deal well with mess. So it's really important for me to um, keep things clean even throughout. Um, now, I also need to what do i need to do i nothing let's just bring plants out righty have a look at this plant uh, it's all going to be a bit of a challenge with focus my syngonia mojito wow well, decent roots right uh, so definitely would need a repot but i don't want to repot it yet what I actually want to do is I want to propagate it because it's getting a bit laggy but I'm not going to give it a moss pile. I'm going to propagate the tops in water and once they're ready for uh, repotting then I'll repot the whole thing. So basically for now I'll just take this and this and this and this. Beautiful, so I took four cuttings, one, two, three, four, propagate them in water, and then I'll continue with this display. And for now I can just keep it here, because it does need a spray. And I'll, dry, I'll, let, the, I'll let the cuts just dry out. Uh, I'll do that inside, because it's too hot outside. This entire pot of alocasias needs work. This ring of fire needs work. Okay, now, I'm a bit confused. I don't remember. I think this one. This one is on threw him crazy rubbish. All of my little hybrids. Oh, they're super cute. Don't need to repot them. I just repotted that uh, over winter as well recently when, I don't know if you've watched that video, but I'll give it a good spray. So hang on. Do we, we say at the back over here, this is just cleaning and over here is repotting. And this is just some Magnificum hybrids, same scenario, lots of little seedlings in one big pot. Also doesn't need repotting, even though there's a few roots sticking out the bottom, but that's okay. Alrighty, I have chosen a super comfortable wine uh, milk crate and let's do some repotting. And I'm hot under this freaking head as well. Do you need a head? It's so uncomfortable, we better be quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's start off with this over here. We've got Philodin, um, Syngonium Styamachii, perfectly fine. I just feel like the mix is looking a bit rank and most of the roots are at the bottom of the pole at the moment. So I just wanna see if I can give this a fresh set of substrate. Roots look healthy, they look good. I just want them to be a little more inside the pot. Don't need to go up a size. I think it's fine. I could, but the thing is, if I size up all my plants, all my poles so quickly, I'm gonna run out of surface space and I'm gonna run out of decorative pots to put them in, so. And ultimately it wasn't root bound, it was just, the roots were outside the pot instead of inside the pot, which is annoying. Alrighty, beauty, that looks good. Next, got some other cages. Okay, with some of these, I might also consider if I want to take some and put them in the garden. Very root bound, this one. But this is actually um, one of my first other cages I've ever had. Huh? This has been in here for ages. It would have been a good 
maybe almost two years. So see how they sometimes like they just propagate themselves like easy. I didn't do this. I, I it propagated all itself. So I might pop this one in the garden later. Uh, what about this? I know that alligator stone might be a little root bound, but there might still be a little too much for it. I'll separate this one out as well. It can also go in the garden. And that leaves it now with a small enough root system to go ahead and give it a new pot. Now, I actually, I do not put it back into the exact same pot that it came in, uh, just because the pot was a little bit dirty, which makes it a bit harder to see whether the mix is um, moist or not and so on. I actually give it a new pot and it's just a pot that I cleaned thoroughly. Uh, so what I do with all of these pots that I taken today, I will clean them thoroughly, just give them a good uh, wipe and get rid of any like algae or anything that has built up on the outside of it so that when I reuse it, uh, it's kind of see-through again, if that makes sense. Now they will eventually get scratched a little bit so you can see when the pot is like brand new, it's much cleaner, uh, much easier to see what's going on, but uh, ultimately I still want to just reuse them, they're still perfectly fine. You know what I mean? See how this is not super clear anymore, it's kind of like very cloudy, hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to give this a clean. Wow, okay. This has got to have like the longest stem in history of allocages and it has very little roots to be honest so it's not the happiest let me cut this bit off what I'll do is I'll chop this into multiple parts so this one can reshoot and now this one, I will just have to water propagate, which is perfectly fine. And this one can go into a small pot, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Ultimately, uh, with my allocages, I just want them to grow kind of lush, not necessarily super large. And I like this mixed display of having multiple allocages all in the same pot. And ultimately, if they were all really, really big, then I wouldn't really have enough room to have variety. Right, this plant has been so sad, like not sad, it's just doing absolutely nothing. The roots are fine, so I just wanted to check on it. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe some fresh substrate will slap it out of dormancy, who knows. So yeah, I don't want to, I could easily just take them all and bump them up a pot size as well. That is totally an option. But then I'm going to fit like, what, two pots in that planter and then it looks sad. Or like not sad, but then I don't have all that variety that I wanted. And that's one of the things that also I think a lot of people online are just not really prepared to... Well, they're not prepared for that, but you get into the plant hobby and you obviously have like a certain thing in mind. You want to create like a certain display or like you want to grow a certain plant in a certain way and you have like a look that you want to achieve. Yeah, you'll achieve that look eventually, but then a second later the plant has changed again. The plant is dynamic. It's a living organism. It moves. It changes with the season. It grows. So. There's been times where a display looks amazing and I'm just like, oh, please stop growing. Like, I just want you to stay exactly as it is. But if it stops growing, then, well, the existing growth will eventually deteriorate and then it will eventually die. So it does, it does need to keep growing, which means that your display changes all the time. Um, it's dynamic, huh? But that keeps it interesting and fun, don't you think? If it was the same every day, all the time, then you could just get a fake plant. And that fake plant will look the same at all times. Every day of the year, every time of the day, every season of the year, whatever. If you have real living organisms, plants, then you have got to live with the fact that they can also change and die and that you never you constantly have to adapt you constantly have to propagate or do something if you are really pedantic about if you're really pedantic about having a certain display you want your plants to look a certain way then you have to be 
you ha you actively have to manage that. And I suppose that's what I said earlier, is the thing that I kind of stopped managing so much this year compared to the years before. I used to manage, mm, do you think this is, I know that I don't mind being too root bound, but this could be a bit too much. Should I just separate those two? But they look so nice together, don't you think? Decisions. I'll give it a bigger pot just because this is the one that I like the most out of them, to be honest. And that's okay. So yeah, that's the one thing that I kind of stopped doing so much this year. I stopped just obsessing around the visuals of every single plant and what needs to be done so that it's visually 10 out of 10 at all times, you know what I mean? Doesn't mean that my plants are now ugly in no way, but I could have probably gotten better displays out of them if I would stay on top of it a little more. But I now have so many that I suppose each plant in themselves isn't so important anymore. But if you, if you have just a couple of plants and you're really aiming for a specific look, then you might have to stay on top of it. Or like you will definitely at some stage have to stay on top of it. You have to continuously chop and extend. You have to continuously water. You have to continuously maybe manage the leaves in which direction they're pointing. I have a video on plant styling as well, where I'm going through all of the things that I do in more depth. If, but some people really just like the, the organic, crazy look. Actually, I had a friend visit the other day and she pointed out that the part of my poles that she likes the most is where they reach the top and they kind of go a bit crazy, unruly. That's the part that I hate. Um, so yeah, tastes are different, but ultimately it depends on what you're after. Really nice roots over here. That's great, actually. I just thought the mix looked a little yucky, so. I'm just going to give this a little repot, see if it needs a bigger pot as well, because this plant is going to stay on this pole for a long time, right? Like, it's cl climbing so slowly, it's only up to here. It has two inflows at the moment, by the way, uh, meaning that, well, it's going to stay on this pole for a long time, which means I might just give her a bigger pot. Specifically considering that spring is here as well, it's just gonna get more and more growth over the next few weeks huh? and months. Also, if I start like a topic and I forgot to finish the conversation, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, I'm trying to do a few things at once today. So I wouldn't be surprised if I kind of got stuck halfway through a conversation and then just got distracted and never finished it. Um, sauce. Alrighty, here we go. That was it already. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. I do think that like 50% 50, 50 of this plant hobby is actually cleaning. <laughs> Alrighty, now let's water them all in. I should probably do this after I clean them more thoroughly, but uh, whatever. At least over here, any of the excess is just going to go into the garden bed and fertilize the plants there, right? All right, so I got rid of the moss poles that are usually here. I mean, you can still see them kind of on the side. I kind of just moved them in. But what I want to do is I want to take the moss pole from outside and put them all here uh, instead. Alrighty, over here we've got my mandula, Pothos, she is happy. Uh, she needs a chop and extend really soon as well, but I figured I can wait a little while longer. Uh, this is my El Salvador, she does not need a repot uh, because I'm training her down the pole, so she doesn't need a repot. <coughs> This is Monstera Deliciosa Vulgata. Also needs a repot soon, but not quite yet. Or not a repot, a chop and extend soon. I think I can wait another couple of weeks, maybe months, because as the plant matures, 
aggressive, much smaller internodal spacing. Okay, two more to go. Right. My big Alan Sinai. Okay, hang on, this is not a good idea. Maybe I'll put this here. Yeah, that's better. This one is my Monstera Dubia. The camera's running out of battery, the microphone is running out of battery, so what I'll do is switch the camera, the battery around on the camera, and I'll charge the mics. You don't need to listen to me water, but I'm just gonna water all of these plants now. And by watering, not because they're necessarily dry, I just really wanna flush them out, clean the leaves, do it really thoroughly, like a big rainstorm in nature would do. All right. Alrighty, we are back where it all started. It is time to move the plants back inside. So, let's do that. Is that it? <sighs> Alrighty, they're all back. I'm not happy with this one yet, actually. <laughs> right, last thing before I'm truly happy with this. This plant, it used to be up there, and up there it had way more room to expand. Now that I took it down a bit, it is kind of, a little too unruly for my liking. So I use twine to kind of manage the plant a little bit, specifically this petiole sticking out a little bit. All right, lastly, in the middle over here, I have my little orchid. And the grow light can move back here. Like this, beauty. Where are you? Yeah. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Next room. Alrighty, next room. Very convenient timing. Timmy just dropped in as well, which is really helpful because he can pass me all of the plants through the window. I don't need to go out, out uh, and so on. So. That was so much faster. Thank you, Timmy. Alrighty. Well, we're out here. Might as well clean up a bit. And it's good timing because the sun is coming in hot over there now. Which also means that I'm a bit worried about the plants in the other courtyard. Okay. Let's 
rinse this all clean a bit. I survived today without stepping into this cactus or falling into this cactus. Oh, I love that misting. Might be a little too much, but it's a hot day and I keep the doors open while the misters are on. These are all new things to me, so I'm still learning. Done and dusted for this courtyard. Let's move into the other one. Alrighty, here's the living room. This is how empty it looks without all of my plants here. Sad, huh? Oh my god, I forgot one. <laughs> oh shit. I fully forgot this plant. It's just hiding in the corner. Well, this is going out now then, while everything else is going back in. Okay, so with plants moving back in, we're going in reverse order. Dubia first. Whee! Adansonia second. Ah, oh, beauty. Oh, I love when that just slots in there. Mangela. The El Salvador. And the Vergated Monstera Deliciosa. That is Syngoniums, the Mojito, and the Stayamaki. Maki, Maki, Ai, Maki, Stayamaki. One of my favorites, actually. Exalus triangularis. She likes sun, so she goes there. And some of the anthuriums. Oh, oh sorry. So it's heavy. More anthuriums here. And sorry, I'm, I'm aware that you can't see everything, but I'll put the ring of fire back there. Alrighty, last thing left is my display of anthuriums. So. Oh, it's a bit taller now. The silver cloud had root rot, so the silver cloud is currently recovering. And so she's kind of leaving a little gap here. So yeah, it's not as lush as it used to be, but there's a little spot for the silver cloud here. And I mean, I just separated a bunch and put them in the garden and I have a... Uh, hang on. Oh, and I've got this one. This one is missing too, that's why. Yeah, so this one would actually be filling the gap here. So, but while it's propagating in water, I'll just keep it closer to the window over here to get more light. It'll be okay. Whew, I'm sweaty. All right, now I get, need to get on top of the garden again because that was all here and I got rid of them to put the other plants on here for a good soak. Just these are a little more manageable if you compare them to like the big dubia for example. So I feel like these are having a better time freestanding so that's why I just put them on the side. But the other poles while watering I hooked them all in to the fence. Just using these sort of hooks. Look okay now. Let me move this over a bit huh. Oh my god, guys, look how amazing my Lucas Spermum looks. Is this not insane? That's what I said earlier when I said I have like interest in all of these new plants. My interest in Proteus was definitely kickstarted by the Mount Toma tour, and I'm so glad I went there. Now I appreciate so many different plants. Anyway, I can't believe I'm done. I mean, I do need to vacuum again and mop the whole floor because moving in and out uh, with all of these plants it made everything dirty again but i'm so happy i wanted to get on top of this for such a long time and i'm this person it bothers me on a daily basis if i see something that i haven't gotten to yet it genuinely bothers me it was a very very productive 
weekend. Now, hang on, I took my phone out because I wanted to see how long that took me. So we started at nine, it is now three o'clock. So this took me, just only took me six hours, which to be honest, I expected <laughs> it to take longer, um, which is pretty good. Now I kept all of the windows open at the moment. So there's nice airflow coming through because obviously there's still a lot of water on these sleeves. Uh, it didn't all dry. Um, I could have left it outside for a little bit longer, but it was getting a little bit hot. The sun was uh, kind of like beaming on them. So I rather took them inside specifically with water on it. Uh, it, it can burn the leaves pretty quickly. So there's a nice breeze coming in. So I'll keep the window open for airflow so I don't have to worry about any sort of fungal infections. Now I hope this was fun for you guys. I hope you gotten on top of some of your plant maintenance uh, at the same time as well. So we kind of did our gardening together. I certainly had a lot of fun. Well, the fun was more in relation to the plants. I'm sorry if I wasn't all too attentive to the camera at all times, but I kind of envisioned this video as like a, you know, repotting with friends. It's not a tutorial or anything like that. I am feeling a little tired though. I think I'm gonna have a coffee sit in the garden and then I might just do the rest of the cleaning later on today. But thank you for watching. If you made it all the way, let's find an emoji. What sort of emoji? Let me see, what's a good emoji? The water gun. Leave a water gun emoji. Um, because I mean, I sprayed a lot of water today. So leave a water gun emoji if you watched till the very end. And if you did, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, by the way, one of the next videos will also be an updated house plan tour. So you get to see all of the work that I've done as well. But I thought it's a little too much to add on the back of this video. Okay, bye for now.